Last time we talked about arrays and pretty much finished up variables and all of the uh, essentials of C-sharp uh, when you're getting started. But now we're going to dive right into our last main concept of this series, which is object-oriented programming. Uh, object-oriented programming will make you stronger as a programmer in, in general, and we're focusing specifically on C-sharp here, so it'll make you stronger, much stronger as a C-sharp programmer. And um, to start off this uh, object-oriented programming stance, we're going to go over functions. Now, functions are basically like some type of, uh, I guess you could say a meat grinder. You put in something in order to get something else out. Now, uh, there's also another type of function which is like, I guess you could say, um, uh, a generator. You put in gas and, 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 it, and it runs a process. And in this case, a generator runs the process of, uh, of uh, powering your house but um, that would be a void. A void is a function that does not have a return value but it runs a process. It just does something. That's all it does. Um, it may establish a new variable. Um, it may uh, change some some uh, variables. It may um, alter you know a class. It may do really a lot of different things but in particular uh, we're going to be dealing today with functions that return a variable. Um, it can be an int, a decimal, a string, it can be whatever. So, right now, we are going to be using this uh, very basic mock calculator that takes two numbers and either multiplies, divides, adds, or subtracts them. And uh, actually, I'm going to take out add and subtract. We don't really need those. Um, I think I can, I can uh, successfully. Uh, exemplify this concept with only multiply and divide. There's no point in going next to and doing those other two because uh, you'll be bored after we finish these two. <laughs> right, so first of all make sure that these two are set to a maximum uh, they have a maximum that you're comfortable with. Uh, I set mine to 10,000. You can set it to 100, you can set it whatever. You ju it, it just depends on how big numbers you want them to multiply or divide. Um, it is possible to have the maximum value possible, but I'm, I'm just not going to go over that right now. It's too time consuming. Right, so uh, for the multiply button, we'll double click on it. And first I'm going to show you how we would create a multiply button without um, using functions. And then I'll show you how we can use a function um, and make our lives a little bit easier. Right, so for multiplying, all you would do is create a result variable. In this case, it's a decimal because um, the numeric up-downs actually have a decimal value, believe it or not, because they can accept decimal values and they need to be able to accept those values. So that's why they have to be decimals. Um, so our decimal result, um, in this case we don't want them to be decimals because there's no point in really having them as decimals. So ensure that your uh, decimal spaces of, um, property right here is set to zero. We're just going to deal with whole numbers right now. Um, your variable still has to be counted as a decimal though. Um, keep that in mind or else you will get an error because uh, the numeric up down has a specific value or variable set that it'll allow. Right, so our decimal result is going to be set equal to number or numeric up down one dot value. and take that value, the first one, and then times it by the second one. And there you go, you have those two numbers multiplied by each other and you've got your result. Now we can print it out to the user by using a message box. The answer is fairly simple, right? Well, say you wanted to do multiplication multiple times. Say you've, you have uh, three different sets of those two um, numeric up-downs and you wanted to be able to multiply for each set. Well, you wouldn't go around taking the same multiplication code and copying it everywhere. You want to be able to reuse that function um, multiple times throughout your throughout your program, especially if it was much more advanced. I mean, keep in, li keep in mind, this example right here is a, is a one-line function. It's not something too overtly advanced. It's not, uh, you know, multiple lines long. So in this case, we can just copy and paste this really because it's, it's just multiplying two numbers. But in most cases, you're going to want to have a function because uh, you'll have multiple things that it's doing. You'll have a uh, very, very large amount of code that you have to cover and you want to use that code over and over again. So you want that function to do that for you. So our function is going to be 
a public decimal called multiply. So basically how you create a function is you first give it an you, you give it an access modifier. Um, we will be going over access modifiers in my last tutorial, but for now, just keep in mind that we have public, private, and then a couple of other ones. For now, we're just going to use public. So, public, decimal, multiply, and then we've got our uh, parameters that we send through, and then our brackets to hold the code that our function does, the, uh, the tasks that it has to complete, so to say. And for our parameters that it passes through, we need to use our numeric up down ones. So we're going to need to have decimals. And we'll use number one and number two, for example. So then we just take result. Oh, whoops. We take decimal <laughs> result and set it equal to number one plus, or rather, times number two. And then return that result to the user. So, basically what we do is we give it two parameters, in this case the two numeric up down ones. It runs through the function, the function multiplies them together and gets a result. Then it returns the result to the user. Now how do we get this result? Well we need to uh, take the function and we need to call it. So we're going to create a new decimal and I guess for the sake of keeping it the way we've had it, uh, we'll just use result is equal to multiply and then we're gonna pass through our number or our numeric up down one and our numeric up down two dot value of course I always forget that for some reason okay so it takes our two numeric up downs and it passes it through the multiply function that then uh, multiplies these two numbers together and returns our result. So this return variable, whatever it's called, is going to return and that's what this value is going to be set to. So result will now be set to that return value. And since uh, it's these two, it's just going to return uh, the multiplication of these two right here. Um, so it's very simple. I'm, I might be making it out harder than it, than it looks, but uh, it's it, it really is easy once you, once you learn how to do it. It's 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 not difficult stuff. So we've got our result. We're printing it out, and let's make sure that it works. Let's take five and multiply it by six. Once our program has debugged here, it's operating a little slow right now. All right. So we'll take five, multiply it by six, and there you go. You got thirty. You can take three, multiply it by six. You got eighteen, sixty-six, uh, hundred ninety-eight, and so on and so forth. So. Our multiply function is working smoothly, very, very smoothly. And let's say we wanted also to have a divide button. Well, let's create a divide function, or so, shall we? We'll call it divide. Set, um, keep those at what it is right now, and change this symbol to divide. It's <laughs> It's it's not that hard to change once you've got something going. You know, once you've already coded it once, you can code it a second time easily. We create our decimal result equal to divide. And then we give it a numeric up down one dot value. And then a numeric up down two dot value. Put a space between here to make it look good. And then let's do our message box. The answer is, I could have just copy and pasted this, but didn't feel like it. <laughs> Alright. And I forgot to uh, put our semicolon at the end of this. Right, so, we've now got our divide function. And it should work fine. Oh, whoops. This actually has to be button 3. <laughs> Tried to copy. Oh, no it doesn't. No it doesn't. There isn't a button three. Whoops. Alright. So we run that. And two actually we'll go six divided by two. And we got three. If we take ten divided by two, we'll get five. And so on. We we it it, it works just just fine. 
10 divided by or 10,000 divided by 5, 2,000. So as you can see, we use our function to uh, pass through our variables uh, as parameters. These are called parameters. And then our function runs uh, a process that it takes our two parameters and multiplies them. Or you can do whatever. I mean, you can have as many processes as you want. You can divide them, uh, subtract them. Um, I mean, functions can get as, as complex and, and, and powerful as you want them to be. Uh, really, you can, already, you can have it format this result for you as well. Um, for instance, change this to that, and then change, um, what is this, divide? Change the divide function uh, to a string, and then return result plus, uh, actually we we'll want to do the same one we had before, which is the answer is and there you go. You are returning a string. Actually, now that I think of it, it would be better to return a message and then make a message variable like that. And uh, the overloaded method, invalid arguments, a decimal result. Oh, you got to change this to a string as well. And there you go. So now it does two things. It divides it and then it formats it in the, in the way of a message. And then it returns it. So then we can use this, um, this divide function multiple times. And we could even format our multiply one th that way too. And if we had multiple buttons that needed to divide every single time we used any of these buttons, we can use this divide code across all of them. That way we don't have to re-script the, the dividing sequence every single time. All we have to do is just uh, call up that function and say, hey, divide this for us. You know. Um, so it's a very effective form of coding. Um, once you get down to, our, to my next video and we talk about uh, objects and, and methods and uh, classes and all, all that uh, very cool stuff, you'll find that object-oriented programming really uh, redefines the way you'll program. It, uh, it makes it a lot more um, structured. It, it, it makes you have a, a lot more, um, I, I guess, professionality to it. So um, stay tuned until then, and uh, I hope you learned something, and I hope you enjoyed the tutorial. Signing off.